Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. This is a Northwest Baseball Report episode, and I am your host, Josh. It has been a great weekend. Um, I was down in Medford covering the Baseball Northwest Championships. Uh, A lot of fun down there, a lot of talent. Now, I will say before we get into anything, I'm going to probably mess up a few times saying Northwest Baseball Report and Baseball Northwest. Uh, just it's going to happen. I'm just going to say right now, it's going to happen. Um, but I had a lot of fun down there. And I do want to say thank you to the players and the coaches and even the parents I got to talk to um, just for, you know, really welcoming me down there. Again, I, I got to cover this event a couple years ago, actually twice when it was up in Centralia. Obviously last year um, didn't happen in Centralia. It was down in Medford, uh, down in Medford again this year. So I went down to, to cover it. It was a, Man, it's just, it's a great event. Josh Warner with, with Baseball Northwest does a tremendous job with all the things that he puts together uh, from the just the simple things like getting the schedule and the fields going to getting cameras and play-by-play guys for each field. It was, it was really a lot of fun to be down there. And I want to take a few minutes just to kind of talk about, you know, things that I saw, things that happened, do even a little quick recap. Um, because it was a it was a great weekend. It really was. Um, there were some factors beyond the control of any human being that made it a little tough. It was hot down there. Medford's always hot, especially in August. Uh, a little bit of smoke, which played into the, the amount of time I was able to cover stuff. But at the same time, um, good things happened. Good things happened down there. And it was fun to be around and just fun to be. And like I said, it was really cool to be able to walk onto the field and have guys say, hey, Northwest Baseball Report's here. Cool, you know, and, and know who I am ahead of time. Talk with me, interact with me. Um, a number of guys I've covered, this is like the fourth or fifth event I've seen them at this year. Um, so I've had a chance to really talk with guys and get to know guys. Um, and some of the guys are, are younger. They're, they're, you know, part of the 23 class, the 24 class. So guys I'm going to get to see for another year or two playing summer ball, doing these type of events. And then for some of the 22s that I've been able to see, you know, actually we'll see them playing Juco ball. They'll be playing, uh, whether it's at Lower Columbia, Yakima, Spokane, Everett, Bellevue, Centralia, on and on and on. I'll be able to see a lot of these guys continue playing, and that's a lot of fun um, and exciting. So let's jump into a little bit of the recap right off the bat. Uh, first of all, your champions for the 2022 uh, level is the Tri-State team. This team... <laughs> this team was stacked. This team was was very talented, top to bottom. Uh, their pitching was good. Their hitting was solid all the way through. Uh, most valuable player for them for the weekend was Tyler Vance. And most valuable pitcher is Brennan Chappell. Uh, so good job, guys. Congratulations. That's a great weekend to get out there and win that, uh, playing against a lot of good teams. And that's one of the things that's different about this showcase versus some other showcases um, you know, you, I go to the, obviously the Arizona fall classic, which is a showcase and there, um, you play a set number of games can set teams. There is no championship. It's just five batters here. You're actually playing games, trying to win. And so that makes it fun, but it's also tough because for a lot of these guys, they're meeting each other for the first time. There are pitchers and catchers who have never met each other before, who are now having to work together and learn quickly and adapt on the fly. And it's kind of cool to see guys do that, see they see them adjust and grow and make friendships. I mean, there's a lot of guys that they didn't know each other starting the event. And by the end of the event, they were they were doing stuff together. They were talking about, you know, going putt-putt golfing and this and that. And it's just fun to see teams kind of bond, even over just over one quick weekend. Uh, but let's jump to the 2023 class. That was one. Um I don't see. Oh, Washington Metro won the 2023 class. I uh, do. I give a shout out to their their coach, Cody Anderson, who has been on the podcast in the past. Um, this team, they were fun to watch. They had some guys who could flat out hit the ball. They were a strong offensive team. Uh, their MVP is Marquez Abelhausen. Excuse me if I said that wrong because I've never seen that name before. But congratulations, Marquez. And and Ryan Vorpal is the MVP pitcher. Um, that is, once again, that team was good. That For the 2023s, I will say that 2023 class is extremely talented. 
uh, last year, Baseball Northwest took um, that took a group from that age group uh, down to the Arizona Fall Classic sophomore one, which is an actual tournament, and they won that tournament. So going up against some lot of great talent, that class won uh, a very big tournament, and it's it's cool to see that. Jumping to the last of the age groups is the 2024 class, and that was won by the Utah team. And this Utah team had pitching galore. They could hit. They could hit, but they could pitch. They, they had guys that were just blowing the ball by, other, by their batters. It was just awesome to see. Uh, Corbin Goal is the most valuable player, and Easton Davies is the most valuable pitcher. And once again, that Utah team – uh, both the 23 and the 24 team had dudes that could throw, but that 24 team, I got to watch them, and they just, man, it was impressive to see guys who were just freshmen last year are now going to be sophomores this year who can just throw the ball. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so that's a quick little recap of, of the winners. Let's talk a little bit about the weekend overall and kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, one of the things that I love about Baseball Northwest and what they do and how they put it together is really kind of comes down to the coaches. Uh, every team in this event has a coach assigned to them, and those coaches have, um, well, th most of them are college coaches. Um, some of them are summer league coaches, but uh, still with college experience, college summer league coaches, um, and then actual college coaches. So you have guys who uh, coach in the NWAC. So uh, Shemekita, had, had coaches there. Lower Columbia, Centroia had coaches there. Um, you look at some of the D3 schools, uh, Brian Kitamura from Whitman, the head coach for, for Whitman, was there coaching a team. Uh, I mentioned earlier Cody Anderson, who's with Bellevue, was coaching a team. So every team had legit coaches in there helping the guys and talking with them. Now, they weren't there doing strategy. There wasn't um, – you didn't see guys out there giving signs – and bunting. I mean, really, the, the most strategy I saw was uh, coaches telling their players, hey, if you get a good pitch to steal on, go. It just that was their strategy, which is perfect for a showcase. I love that. But at the same time, things would happen on the field. And when guys would come off the field, you'd have college coaches stopping them and saying, hey, here's what you could do better, or here's what you did right. I like to see you do this. I like to see you do that. And guys were learning at a showcase. Now, it wasn't those things where, oh, you screwed up, we're going to pull you out. No, it was just simply saying, hey, here's what you did. Here's how you could have done it maybe a little bit better, a little more effective, or for a lot of cases, how you can do it quicker. Because obviously the game speeds up when you get to college. So you had these college coaches giving these, these guys, these very talented players, advice on how to do things to be even better. And one of the cool things is, you know, for a lot of these guys, they won't go to the college that you know, the, the coach they had is there with them and helping them. They're going to go, not going to go to that college. They're just, you can't have that many guys go to the same college and guys are already committed to different places. But for the coaches, it didn't matter. It was about teaching the game and developing players. So even if a guy was going to maybe a, a rival school, it was all about improving the player's ability to be the best that he can be. And that's what matters to these coaches. I mean, that's the thing I, I love. And I know, I know a lot of the coaches who are down there coaching. Um, you know, like I mentioned, Lower Columbia, uh, Kurt Lipinski, the head coach, he was down there with one of the teams. You know, so I, I get to see these guys at the college level, but I also get to see these guys here, and they're just excited to help these kids play, help them grow, help them develop, because that's what it's all about, especially here in the Northwest. I love that. Now, the, the event did take place in Medford, which, once again, it was hot. A little smoky, made things a little challenging for me. You know, I was out there for 10 to 12 hours, uh, pretty much the first three days. The fourth day, I actually didn't go back out there at all. I uh, was feeling pretty junky and just didn't think it'd be smart to go out there. But I did cover 33 games, took 11,000 photos, so not a bad weekend to say. Um, but it was down in Medford at the, was it CenturyLink or uh, Complex? Uh, the main field, Harry and David Field, is where the Medford Rogues play. A uh, nice stadium. It's a it's for summer league. It's a beautiful stadium for a summer league team, especially when that is the that's the primary team. It's just a summer league team, and they have a beautiful complex. Uh, that was a grass field, so natural grass, dirt. The other two fields that were played on 
uh, for this event were all turf, which was really nice to have. They were, I mean, they were honestly, they were perfect. They were perfect fields to play on. One negative I had was the distance between the two or the three fields. Um, I could have walked had it not been for the smoke, but it would have taken me five, 10 minutes to get across to each field back and forth. I ended up having to drive my car to each spot to the parking lots, which, you know, it saved time, made it easier. Got to be in the air conditioning for a little bit. So won't complain about that too much because I didn't, I kind of like that part of it. But having the distance between the fields was tough, um, especially for coaches who wanted to see maybe guys from two different teams at the same time, um, which doesn't happen too much. Usually coaches will plant themselves at one spot and they'll just kind of focus on that field for the day. And that that's an easy way to do it for coaches and probably one of the most effective ways. You can see whole games going on. So um, I, I didn't like the spread of the fields, but the fields themselves were, were great. In fact, that whole complex was amazing. Uh, not only did they have the three full-size baseball fields, but they had a, another area that had five fields that were baseball and softball. So you could do slow pitch, fast pitch, or like more of a little league uh, baseball. And they had two more fields just down the road a little bit, still at the same park, same area. So really seven fields uh, that you could have played, you know, softball or, or little league baseball type of thing. They had, well, I think four or five soccer fields you could do stuff on. All turf. Everything's turf. Outside of Harry and David Field, the main uh, stadium field, everything else was was turfed. And that's that's mind-blowing to me to have, I mean, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, nine or ten baseball, softball fields, and then like five soccer fields, all turf. It was just, it was a beautiful complex. It really is. Um, one of those things where I wouldn't mind taking my daughter's softball team down there at some point to play a tournament just because it was, it was really nice. But once again, going back to the event itself, you know, it, there's a lot of, a lot of time that goes into this. Um, you know, it's not just something that baseball Northwest throws together. They, they really put a lot of time and energy and, and even financial um, in, stuff into this. And they, you see it. I mean, every field had live broadcasts going on. Uh, with usually, I think it's two cameras were every field at least. I know I saw at least two cameras. Uh, I think there was one uh, in center field, one down like the third first base line. And sometimes I think there's even one behind the plate. Not sure on that one though. Uh, but they had someone actually doing play by play for the different fields. So uh, coaches that maybe couldn't come up here for the weekend. Um, I know I heard uh, schools. I believe like Arizona State was going to stay back home and just put all three game, all three fields on their big screens and watch the games, you know, the whole weekend. And so that's cool to see. That's that's a cool option. I even went back to the motel room um, two of the nights and watched games for a little bit and did that. So um, overall, Baseball Northwest is just, it does a great job. It does a great job of putting on events like this. And, you know, once again, is this event perfect? No, I, I don't think there is a perfect event. Um and, you know, that can play into location, that can play into weather, that can play into factors beyond control. So no event is perfect, but Baseball Northwest is probably the, it's probably my favorite in terms of showcases, um, in, in terms of this style of showcase. Now, now for, for me as a photographer, uh, the GSL College Showcase that happened in early July that's my preferred thing for as a photographer because guys are with their teams. Guys have their summer club uniforms on, which parents tend to enjoy more often when it comes to photographs. So that event for me is my favorite also because there's just so many teams there. I can cover so many teams uh, in a three, four day span. Um, but if you're looking at showcase event, I like the Baseball Northwest format. I like the way they approach it. Um, but you know what? Any event that happens in the Northwest that helps players get showcased, helps players get seen by colleges, helps players find colleges to go play at is a good event in my mind. I mean, it's, it's that simple. If you're helping players grow and develop and find the right fit for them in college, then you're doing something right. That's one of the things that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, obviously I covered the, um, the PAC PNW games up in Puyallup. And that was a different format. It's just a, it's a different format, how they approach things. There's a lot of similarities. Um, the way the teams are set up, that type of stuff is very similar. Um, but there are some differences. But in the end, 
you know, you can see that the guys who run the events care about the guys, care about the players. Um, you know, up in Puyallup, you see Arlo and, and Rhett knowing guys by their first names and knowing what positions they play and knowing what they're looking for and what their talents are, and even asking them, hey, what are you looking for in a college? So that they could help advise them and, and introduce them to coaches. Um, same thing down in, in Medford with Baseball Northwest, Josh Warner, knowing guys by their first name, knowing what things they're looking for. And that's what I love to see in these events here in the Northwest is that desire to develop and grow the players and make them the priority. And that's what the Northwest has been doing. Um, I know that there are places all across the U.S. that do that and do it very well. I also know there are places across the Northwest and the U.S. that maybe don't do it at all, don't do it very well. So um, it's good to see some positive things in the showcases happening here in the Northwest. So um, I'm just excited that I got a chance to be a part of of this last weekend. I'm excited that I got to be a chan part of the uh, stuff a couple weeks ago up in Puyallup. And then before that, up in Centralia, you know, it's just, an, it really is a true honor uh, for me to be welcomed and even invited to just come do these things. Because, um, you know, these organizations don't have to let me come in. They don't have to um, say, yeah, you, you have access to the field. You have access to the players. You have access to the coaches. They don't have to say that. They can tell me no. Um, you know, that's, that's truly, truly their choice. And they've been open armed and said, yeah, come on in. And it means a lot to me. It means a lot that uh, Northwest Baseball Report uh, is being, you know, not only accepted, but even being um, supported and, and motivated. And, you know, it, it's great. It's, it's my way of helping promote baseball in the Northwest. And then, um, you know, my way of trying to pay for everything is selling photos. So obviously if you uh, had your photo taken, buy a photo or two, help me out. That is the only um, means of income I really have for Northwest Baseball Report. Uh, for the most part, there's some other little things, but nothing compares to the photo sales, to be honest. So, uh, but guys, with that, I had a lot of fun. It was it was great. You know, I, I wish I wouldn't have come down feeling like crap the last day, um, but I did. You know, I made it home, the five-hour drive home, uh, crashed on the couch, and it's Monday, and I'm still crashing on the couch because I'm just not feeling great even today. So, uh, but guys, with that, I'm calling it a podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for Baseball Northwest for accepting me and letting me come down there and do my thing. It really was a lot of fun. Until next time, guys, summer's almost over. Catch some baseball. You know, Little League World Series actually starts, I think, next week. So have fun with that. Until next time, guys, talk to you later.